Hi, I'm Amalia Brightly Gillett, Managing Director and Second Generation of Family Business Place. Welcome to Family Business in Five, where I tackle some of the most common problems that we see in family businesses in under five minutes. Today, I've got a very special guest with me, Jeremy from ZoomCow, who has spent years working with business leaders from small companies right up to huge corporate ones, as well as working with some high performing athletes. So there probably isn't any challenge you haven't seen facing a, a, le a leader of a business, is there? Of course, no challenge. <laughs> uh, one, of the, one of the subjects I'm going to come on to later is humility. So, I'm, <laughs> But don't, don't do what I do, do what I say. <laughs> so today we're going to talk about one of the hardest things about leading a family business, how you can build trust within your team. Okay, Jeremy, talk to me about trust. We've got five minutes, yeah? Not yet. Okay. We haven't started the digging yet. All right. Five, uh, trust. I think uh, particularly in today's society with social media and... Uh, the scrutiny of the press, etc. Generally, there's an undercurrent of trust in society. I think you look at our political leaders, you look at our business leaders, our large corporations. Yeah, tax I, think, avoid, I think that's fair to say. You know, yeah. yeah. Um, and so I think as a leader, that's your first battle. That's the crocodile nearest your canoe, mm. is how do I build trust? Or what do I do that erodes trust? Mm. I think that, that they're equally valid questions. Brilliant. Okay. So can we do that in under five minutes? Five minutes. <laughs> Just we'll, five we'll, minutes. We'll, we'll conquer <laughs> trust in five minutes. All right. Okay. Let's start the clock. Okay, so there are some very simple things you can do as a leader yeah, to help yeah. start building trust. So talk me through some of those. I think the first one is um, to embrace vulnerability. So often, as soon as you give somebody the title of leader, they, it's like they've, they've tr morphed into a different human being and they suddenly think they should be something different. Yeah. And what they often think they should be is some kind of dictator. And they're, well, I'm a leader, you must now do stuff uh, for me. That's what leaders do, isn't it? Not really. I think... Um, to gain trust, you've got to display your flaws, your you know, mm. the fact that you are vulnerable, you don't know everything, um, you don't know the solution to every problem. And as, as that a starting point, you, you sort of win people over before you even started. Mm. Mm. It's not the same as weakness. Vulnerability and weakness are two separate things. So that I think that's quite hard. I don't know about you guys, but that's quite hard for someone like me. Like you say, you get the title of leader and you feel like everyone is looking to you for all the answers. So to suddenly say, do you know what? I don't know, actually. That, that's, that's a tough one. Yeah, because it, it does seem a contradiction. Yeah. Well, well why, why, if, you don't know the, if you don't know the answers, why, why that, are you the yeah. leader? Well, you do know what you do know, and you have other leadership qualities. It doesn't mean you're suddenly, um, you've suddenly inherited a kind of knowledge you never, ever had before. Yeah. Because one of the things you do have is experience, hopefully, and therefore wisdom. And that's not the same thing. Brilliant. Okay, so embrace your vulnerabilities. Number one. Okay, number two. Invite collaboration. Um, Again, it's this view, oh, now I'm the leader, you must do what I want. No, leadership is about getting people to do what you want them to do because they want to do it. And for them to want to do it, I suggest you've got to invite their collaboration, not, not demand it. Okay, so in businesses, and I've come, I've come across this, you, you know, you ask for people's opinions because you think that's the right thing to do and, and no one puts their hand up. No one puts their, their head above the parapet and says, I've got an idea. So how do you encourage that collaboration? Um, it's, it's almost like holding a space where, you know, people say, well, my, my door is always open. You, always, you can always speak up. They don't actually mean it. Mm. Uh, you've actually got to mean it. And so in meetings or, or when, a, when a, uh, addressing the team or trying to make your strategy or the position of the company very clear, you really create a culture. And it's, it's a really a cultural thing where it, to, to, withhold your, to withhold your views is a is a bigger offence than yeah. or bigger yeah. crime than not yeah. making a mistake. If you yeah. see the point I'm trying to make, and that actually making any mistake, any make, you know, that's not a problem. Not having a go is a bigger problem. Absolutely. I think I think is it Google yeah. who say actually you should encourage breaking things because yeah. then you learn yeah. and we evolve. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so third thing you can do to build trust. That was the thing I was good at earlier. <laughs> Exercising humility. Um, no leader has a monopoly of knowledge, and. To think you have is you kind of you, you come across as a fraud before you even start, and so I think um, the old sort of uh, schoolboy days of a leader knows everything, leads from the front, follow me. It's mm -hmm. just they're long gone. There's far too much information. There's far too many stakeholders in, um, involved. We live in a very sophisticated society, mm -hmm. uh, and whilst you must have your traits and your skills, yeah. it's that humility that you don't know everything. Yeah. Again, invites people to trust you. Absolutely. And also in a family business, you have to remember that your, your business may have been around for 20, 30, 40, 100 years. So people have grown up with you, your, yep. your family name is above the door. So that, I mean, and it's the humidity they love about that family business, isn't it? But, but I think also you touch on, a, I think, 
something which is potentially a really big competitive advantage for a family business. Because of that legacy, uh, those that longevity of relationships, most family businesses, I would suggest, start from a position of far more trust mm. than these anonymous corporations. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, and that's a big leg up. And I don't think a lot of people make enough of that, do they? Oh, you know, in, in, in our competitive landscape. Can you imagine if any political party or Google or Amazon or, or any of these large companies had the same trust aura that a lot of family businesses have? Yeah, they would dominate. They would, they would win easily. And I'd imagine, you know, I said about earlier about your names above the door. People like Warburton's, his mm. name is literally on it. And I mm. wonder how many people in a corporate company would be happy to have their name above the door and that they truly believed in what they were doing. That's quite a unique thing for family business, I'd say. So that's it. Trust. Those are the three things. I, as far as I'm concerned, it's vulnerability, it's collabor inviting collaboration, and exercising humility. Brilliant. Look at that. Under five minutes. <laughs> we did incredible it. We did it. amazing okay so if you are you know leading your own family business no matter what size actually small large anything in between doesn't matter what industry you're in even in order to be a great leader and to be able to really take your family business to the next level it's so crucial that that trust is there between you and your team so let's recap on the three things jeremy just said we talked about embracing your vulnerability you know you don't have to put this facade up it's okay to have weaknesses to put them on show and actually you will find i think that people will come along and they will mm. they will prop you up and they will help you number two invite collaboration which is very different to demanding it you know encourage your team nurture them and you know whether you've got 10 20 30 people in your business that number of brains is far better than just yours. And then thirdly, exercise humility. You know, it's about being humble. It's about knowing that you don't know it all. And, and, and I think if you think about those three things and how you can go away today and implement some of those things in your family business, I think you will, you will see some great results. Okay, so have a think about those things and I'll leave you with one final thought. The more successful your family business, the bigger your family's impact. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you.